thank everybody for being here tonight. And uh, we have a wonderful Savior, a wonderful Lord, a wonderful mighty spirit. Father, we thank you for the word of the living God. We thank you that uh, you said light be and light became. And you said firmament be and firmament came into being. And, and Lord, you spoke things into existence. And Lord, nothing was a mistake. And Lord, our lives are, 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 have been spoken by the almighty creator into existence. And Lord, there's not a person under the sound of my voice that is a mistake. Lord, every person was created for a divine, absolute divine uh, destiny and purpose. And God, we thank you that we can fall into the arms of the living God tonight and just allow him to breathe on us and cause the, 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 the rush of the spirit, glory be to God, the life of, of God to flow through us and realize who we are in Christ who Christ is in us and what we can do in that beautiful and wonderful name. And we give you thanks and praise for it in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, the Holy Spirit's here to do his thing. And we're going to let him do that by uh, just paying attention to his word. So if you have a Bible and you want to open it up, uh, I want to go to uh, the scripture here in 2 Timothy chapter 1. And I want to minister along the line of... Uh, uh, fear not food. Amen. Fear not food. There's, there's certain food that will cause you not to fear. <laughs> and if you eat this food, praise God, you, you will find that you will not be fearing. Glory be to God. You say, it's a diet thing? Yes, it is. It's a diet thing. So uh, we'll, we'll share this with you and just, and you'll see this. 2 Timothy chapter 1. And uh, we'll read, we'll start with verse 1, and because it's, uh, the beginning is always a good place to start. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers with a pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that is in thee also, wherefore I put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God which is in you by the putting out of my hands. Glory be to God. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to to the power of God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, amen, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Isn't that amazing? God knows us. He knows, every, he knows everything about you. He, knew, he knows your uprisings and downsettings. He knows the beginning from the end. Praise God. But he calls us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to our own purpose and grace. You see, there's something about the call of God that draws us to the Father. Amen. It's the most beautiful thing in the world. It's like, it's like you're hearing, this is where I belong. This, you, when you hear the Father's voice, when you hear the call of God, you're saying, that's, that's, the, that's the voice. You know, I, I went to church. And I heard the Lord, and, and even as a young, young believer, I had an experience that uh, we lived in Los Angeles, and I was standing on the back steps. I know this sounds like somebody you may have heard tell a story before, but I was standing there, and, uh, and I heard this voice, and it spoke a, a, a message to me. And man, I tell you what, I was frozen. And uh, I'm just a little Catholic boy, you know, going to church. And... Uh, but this thing arrested me. And, of course, I didn't tell a soul. I didn't know what to make of it. But it kept me from so many things. I would want to go do something wrong, and it, would, it was like I was paralyzed. 
And, uh, you know, you, you don't explain that to anybody. Says, Why, how come you're not doing that with it? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But, but it's inside. I knew why. You see? But that, that call. But see, if you're not feeding on the word, if you're not fellowshipping, yeah, you go to church, you, you, you kind of punch a time clock, and, and you leave and you go home. It's, you know, a half hour, 45 minutes, and that's done. You're, you're, you're done for the week. That's not enough to sustain you. It's not enough to feed you. If you, if you feed your body uh, three hot meals a day and your spirit one cold snack a week, I'm sorry, you're just not going to grow strong. You've got to feed your spirit three strong meals a day. Amen. <laughs> and there's, there's also Holy Ghost snacks you can snack on and worship and praise and, and chew on the uh, Holy Ghost chewing gum uh, of righteousness, peace, and joy. So there's all kinds of ways you can, you can snack in the Lord. But, but you, you definitely want to have a good, solid meat uh, dinner. But, but here's the thing. You could go a long time since you heard that voice. And then when you hear that Lord calling you to be saved, wow, it's like you hear that voice calling you. And that's, that's what he's saying here. He says uh, he, he saved us and called us with a holy calling. I want us to just say that out loud. I'm called with a holy calling. You know, and I'll go on and say this. Nobody is called as much as you are. Say, well, Billy Graham was called to a greater thing. He may have been called to greater numbers, but his calling was no less important than your calling is because you can't walk in another person's calling. The calling you have to answer is yours. So uh, it's just as important that you answer for you as it was for Billy Graham to answer for him. So that, that's a good thing to remember in the name of Jesus right there. But he, and he doesn't call you according to your, your works. He calls you according to his own purpose and grace. So let's get all our perfection out of the way. That's not what God's, God didn't call you to be perfect. He, he said, be upright. Yeah, there's a King James word that says, be ye perfect. But that word means upright, mature, full grown. In other words, you've got to go on to maturity. Go to the fullest level that you can. But if you're looking to be perfect, you, you, already, you already missed it. So uh, no sense trying that. That's not what he means, and that's not what you ought to do. But let's go back up to verse 7, and we're going to talk about fear not food. All right. He says here, God has not given us. We, we've read the scripture many times before. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. <clears throat> let's say it one more time. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Praise the Lord. Now, why does the Lord say he's not given us a spirit of fear? Because people immediately identify with fear. And you think, oh, that's me. Well, praise the Lord. I, I read in my Bible that if anyone be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new and all things are of God. Hallelujah. So with the moment you gave your heart to Christ, you became a new creature. Amen. And, and uh, uh, you know, you don't have the same spirit you don't have the same nature you had before you have a righteous nature you have a new creation nature you have a brand new nature amen the old is gone the new has come and literally you can take that all those sins and they've been buried in a grave never to be dug up except that the devil gets a hold of your mind and you go dig them up it's god not going to dig them up you hear me quote this scripture all the time. I even I am he that blotteth out your transgressions and will remember your sins no more. Isaiah 43, 25. That's God speaking. He will not remember your sins anymore. So, so this spirit of fear is so easy to identify with because we are tempted to be afraid of lots of things. Amen. If you try to do something new, you go, well, I really don't want to do that right now. And I'm not saying you should go out and just because you have to prove to the world you're not afraid of anything, to do everything willy-nilly. No, <laughs> you may not need to do those things. But when God is leading you and God's calling you and God's a part of your life, he's going to lead you in ways that are going to be new for you. And they're going to be like, sometimes you're going to go, whoa, wait a second, I don't know if I want to do that. Why? Because that's something immediately when I think about it, I'm afraid. And uh, if, if I said, I need some recruits tonight, to go to the moon next week. We're going to go put a, a Jesus is Lord banner on the moon. And uh, NASA has given us the, the okay. So uh, do I have any volunteers? 
<laughs> Josh. Leilani and Josh will go. <laughs> I, I would not be raising my hand. I would say I will definitely put you in prayer, and I will definitely sow a seed for you, but uh, I don't have to prove to myself that I'm not afraid of, of something. But if God's calling me to go to the moon, praise the Lord. <laughs> if there are people that are astronauts, they feel called to that calling. Uh, but, but let's just put it in a, in a real sense. What if God's calling you to go to uh, Tanzania or Uganda or Canada, uh, up, up nation Canada or different places in the world? That could be, if it's not already in your heart, that could be a like, whoa, wait a second here. You know, this is a whole change of life for me. I'm going to have to pray about that. And you should. But then you come to different things like this and, and, and something happens in your family. And there's strife and there's indifference. And the Lord says, I want you to go and I want you to go pray for that person. And I want you to repent. Well, Lord, I don't need to repent for anything. I like what Brother Copeland said. There's two times when you should repent. When you're right and when you're wrong. And when you're wrong and when you're right. Amen. So repent. Just know, just repent anyway. Hallelujah. You know, you, <laughs> you, you gain your brother that we just just say, you know what? We, we had an argument. I'm really sorry for for saying the wrong thing. And if they're gracious, they'll say, well, you didn't say anything wrong. It was me. You know what I'm saying? I've had this happen, but we should be bridge builders. Glory be to God. We're not we're not here building uh, uh, partitions between our family members. We're bridge builders and uh, we we can sow seeds of righteousness. But the, the whole point I'm getting at here is that fear is uh, a natural thing that you can be attracted to because we all get it. We all are a part of it. In this world, just let a little child alone. The child's going to cry. Why? Because it's afraid. It needs comfort. It needs to be reassured. Children need to be reassured every single day. Well, spiritually, there's, there's three levels of growth. There's childhood. Uh, well, actually, there's four. There's childhood, there's adolescence, and there's uh, maturity. And uh, the Apostle Paul talks about us growing up spiritually. He said, I fed you with milk. Uh, you're just babes in Christ. I, I fed you with milk, but you can't take the meat. Strong meat belongs to those who are of full age, who have their senses exercised to discern the difference between good and evil. So Paul's wanting them to feed him with meat, but he can't. Why? Because there's strife and division. They're still at the place where they can't forgive each other. They're still at the place where I'm of a Paul, I'm of Apollos, I got my preacher, you got your preacher, I'm this, I'm that. What, what about we all belong to Jesus? That's what, that's what we all belong to. Come on, somebody say amen. But, so Paul's wanting to, he's urging the church to grow up into Christ. And, and part of that growing up is understanding who we are and understanding what we have. Now, here's, here's where the rubber meets the road right here. The, the moment I'm afraid of something, and I use this example all the time, I was asked to do a job. This was way back in, in uh, the, the cable television station. I knew a guy that worked there. I was doing a program there for rock and roll. But now I'm saved, and uh, <laughs> my whole life is different. Now I am cleaning the parking lot at the place where I had a rock and roll program. <laughs> So, you know, I've fallen from from whatever. But part of it was to cut back this bottle brush hedge. And uh, this bottle brush hedge was full of bees. So I'm cutting, I'm cutting, I'm cutting. And finally, I hit this mother load of bees. And and I don't like bees. And and I, I, I was suddenly just gripped with fear. And uh, and I said, well, OK, here we go. Um, and I, I went away and I prayed. And this is a silly illustration, but I'm bringing up something else. So I prayed and I said, okay, now, Mr. Bees, I have to be here. You have to be here. But while I'm cutting, you're not going to be here. You're going to go somewhere else. I'm going to cut and you're not going to touch me. You got it? We got an agreement? Okay. In the name of Jesus, I will not be stunned. And I went and I just, I put my head down. And started praying in tongues. And I just cut, 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 cut. And it was about 10, 15 minutes of just really fast work and good work. And I, I was all done. Praise the Lord. So uh, I, I, for me, that was a moral victory. That was a little bit of a victory, I have to admit. 
on the world scale of things, who could care less? Nobody cares. But I cared. Because I faced something I would not have. I would have said, you know, I'll come back tomorrow morning when the bees are not here. Or whatever. Now, fast forward just a little bit. I was in a situation where I was cleaning the building. And uh, because, like I said, one of the gentlemen I knew there was a manager there. So he, he gave me a job there right away. And I was cleaning the, the restrooms. In one hand was a canister of Comet. How many of you know what Comet is? On the other hand was a toilet bowl cleaner. So I was about the father's business. <laughs> it was probably 1130 at night. And I tripped an alarm. And I said, oh, boy, the, I know who's coming. So the, the security people are going to come. And so I'm cleaning. I'm in the bathroom, and I, I'm using this and doing that. And I open the door, and I now I'm lost. My mind is drifting. It's been enough time to where I'm not thinking of the cops anymore. My mind is just sort of drifting on my job. And this cop, I open the door, and I look literally down the barrel of a gun. And he said, freeze! Just like, and he did this, freeze! And I said, Bleh! I couldn't even talk English. And I shook this thing. And, of course, he's looking at me with the uh, comet <laughs> and the toilet bowl cleaner. <laughs> and he's probably thinking, boy, I got a live one here. <laughs> he's going to immediately call for backup, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. So I was absolutely swallowed up in fear. And... Uh, and I was so upset with myself. And we talked and, and, you know, he let me calm down and stuff and said, sorry, I tripped the alarm. And this is really all I have. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> if you want to follow me around while I finish my job, you'll see that I'm actually supposed to be here. Anyway, that was cool. But I went and asked the Lord. I said, Lord, why? Why did I react so badly? I mean, I, I had a little victory with the bees. And this one just absolutely took over my thinking. And I felt it was inordinate amount of fear. I mean, I couldn't even talk English. I was, and it wasn't tongues either. And so uh, the Lord began to t deal with me on the way I think. He said, what were you thinking about? And, of course, my mind was just drifting. I was thinking about whatever, you know. It's like I don't remember what I was thinking about it, but but I wasn't meditating in the word or, or whatever. So my mind was drifting. And, and here's the thing I wanted to, to share with you uh, about fear not food. There is food that, that, that you can partake of that will cause you not to fear. Amen. It, you know, if you, if you take certain antibiotics, you'll not get certain things. They, they, they will cause you to be uh, not immune from it, but what? Resistant, thank you. Uh, you. You'll have a resistance to this thing that's out there. And, and there are people that are nutritionists and so forth that if you eat certain foods, your body be, will be resistant to certain kind of, uh, uh, of uh, anom uh, what do you call them? Bacteria. Thank you, bacteria. Problems. Hallelujah. Any other words? Come, come, <laughs> help me, I'm drowning. <laughs> Anyway, but the thing is, you can build your body up to be strong against certain bacteria and certain things. Well, spiritually is the same way. We can feed on the word of God. And how do I mean that? Well, let's just take an example of God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, that's one of the scriptures. I did know that scripture. And that's what part of what made me upset. Why did I have such a reaction of fear? And the Lord said, you weren't meditating. You you're let your mind drift. And I said, OK, OK, I, I'll take that. I, I, I'm, I stand corrected. And uh, and I so I began to meditate in the word more. Joshua 1 8 meditated my word day and night that you may be you may see how to deal wisely in the affairs of life. Amen. So these are some scriptures. You can write these down. But these are some hall of faith. Fear not scriptures. Glory be to God. If there's a hall of faith for fear not. These scriptures are in it, and they are, <laughs> they're heavy hitters. Praise God, they hit fourth in the lineup. They're power hitters, if you will. 
Uh, that's just the baseball analogy. But anyway, Isaiah 41.10. Just listen to this for just a little bit, and you'll, you'll start get a drift of what I'm saying. Fear thou not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. But he says, fear thou not, for I am with you. Philippians 4.6. Philippians 4, 6, be careful. And that's a, that's a word that's telling you not to fear. Do not fear or have any anxiety is another way of saying it. About anything. Do not fear or have any anxiety about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. See, that's what could have happened to me that night, but it didn't. Uh, John 14, 1 and 2, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Wow. Don't let your heart be troubled. How, how did I let my heart be troubled? I, I let it because my mind drifted. You know, your, 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 your thoughts will go in the direction that you direct it to go. If, if there's no director, they're just gonna, it's going to go anywhere. It'll, it'll just go like that movie, uh, what is that, 80 Days Around the World or... <laughs> Around the world in 80 days? Is that what the movie was? Yeah, you just go around the world in 80 days. That's what you, you just drift. And you don't want to do that. He says in John 14, 27, Peace I have leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Glory be to God. Neither let it be afraid. You can't just let life take its course. You have to be the person at the helm. Glory be to God. Now, when you're at the helm, you're saying, Jesus, it's all yours. Tell me where to go. You have to do the driving, but Jesus will tell you how to do it, where to go, when to stop, when to slow down. You understand what I mean. Second Timothy, or excuse me, 1 John 4, 17 and 18. 1 John 4, 17 18. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love or love that's perfected or love that's allowed to flow at full force. That's what perfect love is. It's like a, it's like a, a, a stream of water that is, has no um, uh, what, what, <laughs> it, it, it's allowed to go its full force. There's nothing obstructing it. There's no obstructions whatsoever. The water's free to flow. Every valve is open and there's nothing obstructing. So this kind of love, perfect love, casteth out fear. Did you know fear can be cast out? Fear can be cast out. You can cast out fear. Amen. You can cast out the devil. Amen. Boy, I like, I like saying, I just like saying cast out the devil. I love that. I love the sound of it. You know, if you've ever been harassed, if you've ever been bothered, if you've ever been bugged, if you've ever been pushed around, you love to cast out devils. Because I, I, I was pushed around in my head unnecessarily. I'm in church taking communion, and the devil sit there and try to mess with your head. It, but I didn't understand spiritual warfare. I didn't know there was a, a real devil. I, I, but I found out, I found out how to put him under my feet. There's no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. Aren't you glad you don't have to have torment? I will not be tormented. Amen. I will not be tormented. Glory to God. Neither should you. Why? Because Jesus paid a price for us. Torment, you have to get under my feet. Fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. You know, somebody could take offense to that. Whoever fears is not made perfect in love. Well, that's not fair, God. You're telling me that I'm not made perfect in love because I have, I, I, you know, I have that in my life. Well, I'm going to share with you how to get out of it. When I read that, I don't take, get offended. Whoever fears is not made perfect in love. That night when I had the, 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 the thing of comment and, and, the, and the cleaning brush and I got afraid, I didn't get mad when the Lord told me, where's your mind? You opened the door to trouble. I said, oh, Lord, I better learn. I, 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 you know, either one or two is wrong. Either I'm wrong or he's wrong. 
guess what? <laughs> I'm picking me. Because <laughs> if he's wrong, we're all in trouble. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad he wasn't wrong. You know, and if you, if you just say, okay, Lord, if I've done it wrong, if I've learned wrong, if I don't know enough, let's get in the class and let's get this thing taken care of. Let's learn how to do this. You know, there's nothing wrong with, with missing the mark. The, the problem is when you keep missing the mark and you're not open to correction. We say it all the time is, you know, you can't stop the birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from building a nest in your hair. Amen. And so you, <laughs> you don't want fear to be building a nest in your hair. Praise God. <laughs> That'll mess. You spend all that money and then you got your hair all messed up. That's not good. Okay, let's look at another one. Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 3. Uh, uh, <clears throat> now thus saith the Lord that created you, O Jacob, he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you, for I am the Lord your God. Glory be to God. Now, I... I if you fast forward this, and I, I, so I took that as a correction. I said, okay, Lord, I'm not going to let this thing take over my thinking. And, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of person who would sit there and I would sing to myself all day long before I got saved. Before I got saved, I had headphones on all day long listening to the, the music I like because that's what I did. I love music. And I'd listen, 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 listen all the time. And uh, so I would constantly have a song in my head which reminds you of this reminds you of that but so I began to meditate in the word and now I have Holy Ghost songs I can sing in my head and I can play the word of God in my head I have the Bible on tape and things like that so uh, and, and I've shared this not too long ago and I'll just real quickly when I was surrounded by four people in the middle of the night in Richmond and they beat on my car and they you know a guy had his his hand around my throat Guess what? The first thing that came out was the gospel. Why? It wasn't, oh, no, no. I, I didn't freak out. Now, that's a place I should have freaked out. Amen. I had a legitimate right to freak out there. That wasn't a policeman coming to, that could help me. These were four people that could hurt me. But, you know, by that time, I had learned how to meditate in the Word. And listen to me real closely, because I have these scriptures here. Are you seeing this? And this on this other side? These are all scriptures about fear not. If this is that important to you, this is what you'll do. This is your homework. This is a diet, a fear not diet. And this fear not food taken three times a day <laughs> for the next 30 days. I'm not giving you a prescription. I'm giving you an idea. OK, that's how serious you got to be with the word of God. If, you, if the problem's that serious, then you got to be that serious with the Word. If you're not that serious with the Word, then the problem's either that not, not that serious or, or you don't care enough. But, but I believe I'm talking to the right people. They care enough. You all care enough to, to, to let God teach you and train you and mold you. But if something is that serious, I'm going to put all my time and energy into it. And, and I'll give you an example of this because there's so many things I had to learn this way. I had a problem with love. I could not love people. You know, back in the day, that was the peace movement and the hippie movement, and I was on the tail end of that, and peace and love, and, and I'd heard love a thousand times, and I thought it was great. You know, all you need is love and, and uh, whatever. But I knew with the, my family and all the problems we had, my mom and dad, that I knew I could not love. I looked at my mom, and I said, you, you know, I'm sorry, I can't love you. My dad, forget it. I can't love with the kind of love they needed to be loved with. I'm too upset. I'm too disappointed. You understand what I mean? And, and you realize, I can't lie to myself and tell myself, oh, I love you. I don't. I don't know what love is anyway. I'm just being honest. So, I, you know, it's like I, I said to myself, if you can't love, then don't tell anybody you do love them. I would never tell a girl I loved her. I would never tell on a, on a thing, love you. No, I didn't do that because I knew I couldn't. But when I got saved, when I got saved and I read, there's no fear in the perfect love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. 
And I began to read about this word agape. And people started teaching that at church, that there's different kinds of love. I said, oh, no wonder I stuck with this old sloppy little puny kind of love. And I knew that there was something bigger, greater, and that's the one I wanted, and that's the one I knew I couldn't do. I didn't have the, I didn't have the wherewithal to do it. I didn't have the power to love like that. But when Jesus came into my heart, he, he, he gave me his agape. <laughs> Woohoo! He gave me this, this God kind of love that doesn't care what people think, doesn't care what they say, doesn't care what their opinions are, doesn't care what they did to you last week, doesn't care if they, they put you last on the list when you should have been first, doesn't, what they wrote you out of your will and you should be the first one in the will. None of that matters. The only thing that matters is that Jesus died on the cross and he gave himself for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. You see, that love comes into our heart. And I read that and I, and I realized, I said, Lord, I don't know anything about this. So listen to me. For 30 days, I heard Kenneth Hagin say this. He said, if, if, you, if you can't walk in, in perfect love, he said, if I were you, I'd, I'd just read 1 Corinthians 13 three times a day for 30 days. And he just sort of said it glibly. He didn't say, I promise you, and if you do this, write your name down and send me your name and I'll give you a little sticker. You know, he didn't do that. He just said, you should do this. So I listened to him and I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it three times a day, 1 Corinthians 13, and just read about the love of God. He bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, never runs out, never comes to an end. God's love never fails. Woohoo! Thank you, Jesus! And man, I started, I started telling my mom I loved her. I told the dog I loved the dog. I loved the cat. Praise God. <laughs> I loved the world. I wanted to see if maybe we could get Satan saved and get him turned around. Of course, that's silly, but but you get filled with love. Are you here? This is what it's all about, church. It's about being filled with the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. And man, when you get so filled with love, somebody tries to start an argument with you, you're just, you're just not going to go there. <laughs> not going to go there. Mm -mm, not going to go there. Why? I, God loves this person. The person I'm, I'm about ready to argue with, God loves this person. And... and uh, you know, you ever fought with a brother or a sister in your own family? That's the dumbest thing you ever did. Your family. The Hatfields are fighting the McCoys. They're relatives. They're cousins. I think. <laughs> There's people that won't talk to somebody for 25 years. Church, we've got we've to be bigger than that. God talks to us when we didn't talk to him. But how long do we... Shine him on. So this, that love food, that, that love food changed me and changed the way I think and changed the way I talk, changed the way I think, changed the way I act. And, and God's love can take control. And you know what? Every once in a while I just go back and I just, I just say, Lord, I remember when I couldn't love. I remember when I couldn't love. And you, you, you helped me. Praise God. You helped me. And I don't run away from things. I don't run away from trouble. I don't run away from hard things. Because love, see, love will stay. Love will work it out. Love will get something done. Love knows how to fix things. If I don't know how to fix it right this second, I'll figure it out. Because God has a way. Love always finds a way. It never fails. Amen. So, so love work, that love food work, but the fear not food will work too. And I'm, I'm telling you something. Fear will not, it'll be so foreign to the way you think if it's not already. So foreign to the way you talk. You just won't let it allow yourself to go there. That's, that's how strong God wants us to be in, in, the, in, in that perfect love, casting out fear and not fearing. Look what he says again, Psalm 23, 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you? Oh, he commanded us. Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. 
for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Matthew 6, 34. Do not worry. Be anxious about tomorrow. In other words, don't fear, for tomorrow will have worries and anxieties of its own. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. He's trying to tell us there, look, you're going to have troubles every day. It's part of this life. He said, I've overcome the world. Don't worry about it. It's going to be okay. You and I are going to walk together. And when things happen, don't say, oh, my gosh, I didn't think this would ever happen. Oh, Lord, a coronavirus. Woo. He's saying, you know, don't fear. Don't fear. We're, we're, we're going to handle this. We're overcomers. Isaiah 35, verses 3 and 4. Strengthen your weak hands. Confirm your feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. You know, sometimes you should say to your own heart, be strong, fear not. You learn to talk to your own self. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense, and he will come and save you. He will come and save me. Oh, this is, a, this is one of the cool ones. Psalm 27, verse 1. Most of us know that. Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? <laughs> the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? <laughs> the Lord is my light. <laughs> anyway. Psalm 41, verses 13 and 14. Psalm 41, verses 13 and 14. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying unto you, Fear not, I will help you. Fear not, you worm Jacob, you men of Israel. I will help you, says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Psalm 46, verses 1 through 5. Psalm 46, 1 through 5. I had to put in the whole portion here because it's just too good to leave out anything. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. He's a help. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth be removed. Boy, that's pretty strong. The earth being removed. Talking about an earthquake. Have you ever been through an earthquake? I mean, California. I, I, I've, I've stood there. and we were, <laughs> we were in one person's house in, in uh, San Ramon. And I'm telling you that the living room was like a jelly bowl. It was like, <laughs> it wasn't one of these real hard shakes. Because that's that, those are the ones that, but this was like a roll. It was like, ooh, was, <laughs> we were just, we were almost got our surfboard out and started riding with it. Fear not. That's the whole thing. I'm not going to be afraid. Why should I fear then? Hallelujah. He says, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed. Though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. Isn't that beautiful? How the Lord, see, He's telling us not to fear. Why? Because He's going to help us. Now, you say, Pastor, what if, what, if I, what, if, what if I do get afraid? What if, you know, the Bible said you should not be afraid of sudden terror, Psalm 91. But what if I do? Well, do, it's not the end of the world. Amen. Reach in and take a couple gospels. Amen. You know, <laughs> hallelujah. And just take them. Glory to God. Just, get, you know, put them in your mouth and just, I don't know, Psalm 91. I will not be afraid of arrows that fly by day mm. or arrows that fly by night. Psalm 91.4. That's where we have to be. Run to the word. Lift up your hands. One of the things that I've learned to do is commit scriptures to memory. I didn't really do it on purpose. I didn't really say, okay, I'm going to memorize this scripture. I just, I just started meditating. When you meditate properly, you say it over and over and over. That's what it means. Meditate means to mutter. It means to say it under your breath. It's like, it's like positive worrying. You know, worrying is meditating on the problem. Positive worrying is meditating on Scripture. <laughs> Hallelujah. I hope that makes sense. Psalm 118, verse 6 and 7. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Hallelujah. You know, if you commit that to your, to your memory, to your heart, you'll just always have it. And... Uh, 
I look at it this way. You know, if you get hit by a truck, you'll never forget it. If you get hit by a scripture, you'll never forget it. It'll hit you in such a way that you just, wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. Now, you can commit scriptures to memory, and that's not a bad idea. But uh, sometimes you don't even have to try. It just is so, it hits you just such a, in a beautiful way. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do to me. The Lord hath taken part with me. Uh, excuse me. The Lord hath taken my part with them that help me. Therefore, I shall see my desire upon them that hate me. Psalm 34, verses 33 and 4. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. And he delivered me from all my fears. Psalm 34, verses 3 and 4. I sought the Lord. He heard me and delivered me from how many? Come on, say it out loud. Yeah. All my fears. There's not a fear, oh my goodness, on the list that can, that, that, that can stand the light of day. Revelation 1, 17 and 18. Fear not, for I am the first and the last. I am he that lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. I have the keys of hell and of death. <laughs> That's the, all, the Alpha and Omega speaking. He says, fear not, I'm the first and the last. He's got our back. Romans 8, 38 and 39, it doesn't really say fear not, but it does in so many words. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, one of the things that's true is we can, we can gather up these scriptures and begin to feed on them, meditate on them, and, and, and eat this fear not food and, and begin to digest this fear not food. And we gain great victory. And, and suddenly we have, we're walking in a level we have not walked in before. And we cruise along, and I don't say that flippantly. I'm just, you know, we're, we're just walking with the Lord. We're cruising along. It's beautiful. But, but all of a sudden, we're faced with a whole new set of things. Because we're at a more mature level, God's trusting us with more. You're responsible for more. What's going to happen when that next level of, because there's things going to come you haven't seen before. But don't be afraid. You can learn twice as fast. What God started, he's going to complete. Come on, church. Hallelujah. I've heard, I've heard this so many times. People say, you know, it was the hardest thing in the world for us to believe that God could pay the rent on our first house. And now these people are responsible for $6 million a month on a building. Amen. Uh, Brother Copeland donated his car Kenneth Hagan, because that's all the money he had. He wanted his tapes so badly. He, get, he left his car there, and Brother Hagan had to have it towed away to the, to, <laughs> to the wrecking place because it was so bad. <laughs> the house Brother Copeland lived on was condemned. That, the house he lived in was condemned by the city. And their, 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 their ice chest was a cardboard box with a block of ice in it. That's how they kept their food cold. But they were, they were poor. But yet he takes the gospel to all around the world and flies in a jet to get there. But, you know, it, it, the thing is, you have to commit yourself to the things you believe in. You have to commit yourself to, the, to walking uh, free from fear. You have to commit yourself to walking in the love of God. And when you do that, it seems like hard work at first, yeah. But you know what? Sin is harder work. Amen. The way of the transgressor is what? Anybody know? One, two, three. Everybody say hard. Say it again. It's hard. But, you know, obedience, it, it brings the blessing. And after a while, it's easy. <laughs> it's easy. Praise God, because the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he has no sorrow with it. Yeah, it takes some little diligence and some application. And, and, and you'd rather quit sometimes, but you don't quit. And guess what? God's blessing just overtakes you. He said, all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you if you'll be obedient. Uh, Psalm 23, 4, I just got a few more. Psalm 23, 4, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. 
Why? For thou art with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. And believe me, God's rod and staff do comfort you. Praise be to God. Matthew 6, 34. Don't worry be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow have worries and anxieties of its own. I think we already read that one. Isaiah 35, 3 and 4. Strengthen, Isaiah 35, 3 and 4. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. I don't know if I read that one either. Oh, I'm on the wrong page. That's why. Sorry. <laughs> but it was good a second time. It's like a second piece of steak. It tastes like the first one. Mmm, glory to God. <laughs> Luke 12, 32, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He, you know, he could just say, fear not, sit in the corner, it'll be all right, just grin and bear it, but, you know, don't let fear get you. He says, no, I'm going to give you the kingdom. Wow. The kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Isn't that great? And he gives us the keys of the kingdom, not the keys to the kingdom. The janitor has the keys to the kingdom. We get the keys of the kingdom. Glory be to God. And then we oh, I'll close up with this Psalm 91. And again, this doesn't say fear not, except well, it does say it a couple places. But the whole thing's telling you not to fear. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord. This is what I'm going to say about my God. He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover me with His feathers and under His wings will we trust. His truth shall be my shield and my buckler. I will not be afraid for the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flieth by day. Some people are afraid of the night. I would just get up in the middle of the night. I'd light a candle. I'd, I'd take communion. And I'd say, from this day forward, devil, in Jesus' name, you're not going to make me afraid of the dark. You're not going to make me afraid of night. You're not going to make me afraid of anything. Because I'm getting up in the middle of the night and telling you, Jesus is my king. And I'm taking communion, and I will not be afraid of the terror at night. In the name of Jesus, from this day forward, you have just been demoted. Amen. Nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand. Have you ever seen that many losers lose their power against you at one time? Amen. Demon spirits have to fall. 10,000 at one side, 1,000 at the other. Glory be to God. Only with your eyes, it says, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because, now this is key right here. Because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, your habitation. Therefore, no evil shall befall you. Neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For the Lord shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Now, you've got to remember, fear is a spirit. And it's a, it's a demon spirit. Well, angels are God's spirits, ministering spirits, sent forth to minister for us who are the heirs of salvation. Hallelujah. And there's more on our side than there is on theirs. So there you go again. He'll give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bury you up in your hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion, the adder, the young lion, and the dragon shall you trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. How long? Long enough to satisfy him. Woohoo! <laughs> With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Father, we thank you. 
so much for the precious blood of Jesus. We thank you so much for the righteousness of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. We thank you so much, Lord, that we can, we can partake of fear not food and have a fear not life. Oh, we have no need to fear because you are here. You are in us, living big on the inside, causing us to know your ways, causing us to know your spirit, causing us to know your voice, causing us, God, to follow. Oh, the good shepherd who leads us in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. And Lord, I thank you for every spirit of fear bowing its knee right now in the wonderful name of Jesus. Fear of heights, fear of darkness, fear of, uh, uh, of not enough, fear of, of sickness or disease in the name of Jesus, fear of COVID-19. Lord, fear of, uh, uh, of, of, of being sued or fear of losing a, a lawsuit or fear of any legal battles whatsoever. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit of fear to die right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you that you make us more than conquerors. And you fill us with your mighty love. You fill us with your mighty love, Lord. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. I pray that they come to know the height, the length, the depth, the breadth of the love of God. To be filled with all the fullness of the Lord. Now unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly beyond everything that we can ask or even think. According to the power that's at work within us, unto him be glory in the church. By Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end, so be it. So be it in the wonderful name of Jesus, in the wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, blessed be the Lord. Let's just worship God for a moment. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Jesus is to me. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Blessed be your holy name, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, we just thank you for that spirit of power and of love and a sound mind. Spirit of power and of love and a sound mind. Lord, the, the battle's over with, with you. We surrender to you. You're our king. You're our Lord. Hallelujah. That which we don't understand, we're not going to let it bother us because you're just going to teach us when we need to know. Lord, we lay every questioning thing at the foot of the cross and we just embrace the mighty love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Yes, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah to God. Blessed be the Lord. We allow that love to just flow full force. No hindrances, no blockages. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Holy, 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 holy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If you got something to, to, to add right here, Greg, or, or sing or something, yeah, feel free. We're just worshiping his name. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Oh, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. 
Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Oh, mighty God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. You know, the, the last thing I want to share here is, uh, as Greg is singing, sometimes our fears are not really the things that are coming against us to hurt us, but they're the fears of believing what God wants us to believe. Amen. God's wanting us to say, and here's the thing, don't, don't allow yourself, I say this a lot, I know, don't allow yourself to be painted into a corner like, oh, if I don't say this, God's not going to be happy with me, and, and you know, if I don't confess this or whatever, that's just the wrong, that's just the wrong way of looking at it. Don't allow yourself to get over in that place. But, but you see, sometimes God will have you say, you know, for me to say, for me to say to you, looking at this webcam, looking at that camera, and looking at people here, and look you square in the eye, I couldn't do that before. I, could, I didn't look people in the eye. I didn't have enough to say. Who am I? I'm nobody. Why should I even talk? I'm serious. But I remember, and, and it was through correction. My pastor asked me to speak, and I spoke, and he, actually what it was to take up an offering. And he said, uh, that was the worst offering I've ever heard. It was the next day in the office, you know. He, he asked me to take up the offering. I took up the offering. He said, that's the worst offering I ever heard. He said, you can't be ashamed of what you're doing. Well, see, he was a salesman, and he was a, a, a used car salesman. And uh, I didn't know he, he wasn't when I knew him, but he had no fear of almost anything but you know I was timid because I'm not telling people what to do they're older than me I'm just a kid and he said that's God's he said this to me he said that's God's offering to you and that's what they are doing between them and God he said and you are to take that offering with honor and I said yes sir and I read scriptures on giving and I took up another offering and guess what I look people square in the eye. And that's why every once in a while I say, look at me. Everybody look at me. And I do that to give everybody's attention. I'm about to say something. I want, don't want you to miss it. But I used to not be able to do that. But here's the, here's the real thing I'm saying. If God wants you to confess from his word, you see, this is the strength. It's not saying something that makes it strong. It's saying what he said that makes it strong. Are you here? If he said in Hebrews 13, this is my, this is my favorite scripture on saying. <laughs> Hebrews 13, he said, verse 5, I will never leave you nor forsake you so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. For me to be afraid to say, I will not fear. What can man do to me? If I can't talk like that, now you may do it a different way. Your strong way of saying it may be different than mine. But if you can't, the strength of your heart, all the strength you have, say that, then you need to be able to do it. And if you can't do it, it's a spirit of fear that's keeping you from saying it. That's what I'm trying to say. Hallelujah. Sometimes if you need to start off by getting in a closet, close the door and let it rip, then do it there. But you need to let that trumpet blow. You need to let that voice be heard because people get mad at other people twice as strong as they get their praise with God. Come on now. Am I right? Some people praise their football team more than they do their God. We, we just have to have, the, all I'm saying is, man, get it in your heart. Let the Lord build a fire in your heart about his faithfulness. And then when you say what he says, it comes out as a roaring lion. Praise God. Because the lion of the tribe of Judah is living on the inside of us. And he's proclaiming through your mouth his destiny for your life. Oh, glory be to God. And the devil, all the gates of hell cannot prevail against it in the wonderful name of Jesus. You can tell I get excited about this topic. It changed my life. It's the diet that I have. It's the diet I feed on. 
It's the food that I eat. It's the, it's the fear not food <laughs> that allows me not to fear. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Well, uh, I think we're through. Unless there's a, a prayer need out there. Anybody have a prayer need that we can pray over? Or a question? Praise God. It's Wednesday night. We, we can take a question or two. Uh, 